Welcome to episode 202, Jensen Wang, from Startup Failure to GPU King of the World. This is an outline of episode 202. There are three reasons why we study Jensen Wang. First, he's the GPU king of the world. Second, he's an inventor of the GPU platform, from which some of the most important technology in the early 21st century evolved. These new technologies are deep learning, AI, cloud, etc. Third, at age 54, Huang can lead Silicon Valley in the next 10 years. Jensen Huang was born in Taipei, Taiwan in 1963. I was a rambunctious kid. I was always pushing my boundaries. I was always uh, doing something that was on the border of naughty. At age six, he moved to Thailand with his parents. In 1973, I, th I think I was nine years old. My older brother was 10. Well, there was an upheaval. Um, military was uh, tanks and soldiers were marching down the middle of the street. Uh, people were shooting each other. And so my parents, my parents felt that it was probably best um, to send us to the United States to work, to live with our uncle. Shortly after, um, they sent us to uh, Kentucky uh, Oneida Baptist Institute. This is a map of Kentucky, United States. And um, uh, Oneida Baptist Institute turns out, turns out to have been a, a quite a special school. And um, my first sign that, that this was a different school was the entire ground was covered with cigarette buds. My roommate, I mean, I, I, um, I was expecting a roommate uh, about my age. Turns out my roommate was um, uh, 17 years old, uh, getting ready for bed. Uh, I noticed that he had all these uh, fresh wounds and uh, he had just come from the hospital. He was in a fight. He had seven stab wounds uh, and the other kid was killed. And so uh, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was my roommate. And so that was, that was kind of the beginning of my American experience, if you will. And um, uh, I, I loved it. I, I loved every moment of Onida. I know as a young man, he was a ping pong champion, uh, played in, in national doubles tournament. He came in second. I know Jensen. He doesn't like coming in second. To him, that's first loser. In 1981, he graduated from Aloha High School near Portland, Oregon. And he began his study of electrical engineering at Oregon State University. As a freshman, he was teamed up with Laurie Mills in the electrical engineering fundamentals lab. Laurie Mills and Jensen would marry five years later. In 1985, he graduated from Oregon State University with a degree in electrical engineering. He moved to Silicon Valley after graduation and worked at AMD and then at LSI Logic. With wife and two young children, Huang pursued Master of Science in Electrical Engineering part-time at Stanford University, graduated in 1992. At Stanford, said Jensen, I fell in love with computer design. In February 1993, on the date of his 30th birthday, he co-founded NVIDIA with two others. It was a promise he made to his wife, Lori. We had a vision for NVIDIA that we could be the most important, the most relevant 3D graphics company in the world. Um, that was a bold thing coming from three guys working out of a condo in Fremont. My first official day of work was my 30th birthday, February 17th. And um, once we got started, the question is, what are we going to do? You know, how does it all work out? How do we start the company? And so um, we met every day, the three of us, uh, in, in one of the founders' townhouse uh, in Fremont. And, um, and we would get together, and, and there would be nothing to do. I mean, what do you do? You get three guys and get together, you just talk, you know? So, so what did you guys do last night? Uh, what, you know, what did you have for dinner? I mean, so you, you talk about that for about six months. Because at that time, I'm reading about books on how to start companies, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to go raise money, and you know, what's a venture capitalist and how do you incorporate the company and so those kind of things. Eventually, NVIDIA received funding from Sequoia Capital. In November 1995, two and a half years after NVIDIA was formed, Huang shipped the first graphic chip, NV1. NV1 did not sell well. Jensen had to lay off 70% of his employees to conserve cash and hope for a second chance. 
wishing you embrace failing. Avoiding failure is not the same as achieving success. In fact, finding failure is a discovery of sorts. It's a discovery of yet another way how not to do something. Failure is often on the path to success. It was for NVIDIA. NVIDIA failed, failed from the very beginning. We found fame early on as a failed startup that was surely to go out of business. You know, every high-tech startup has a fundamental technology that they thought they discovered. And the fundamental technology we founded the company on was a rendering technology called forward texture mapping. It doesn't matter what it stands for. It doesn't matter what it means. There are tens of 3D, there were tens of 3D graphics companies, huge established ones like Silicon Graphics, to well-funded startups like 3DFX. And we were the only company to use this approach. We did it for logical reasons. We believed in what we believed. Well, our approach was flawed. Inverse, which is the exact opposite, rather than forward, was the better solution. We were just wrong. NV2 was saved by Zika, a Japanese game company. Dreamcast, a console that launched two years later with the Hitachi Edge Search 4, and bringing no demand from Sega. In late 1999, the VDS fortune changed. GE Force 256, or NV10, was the blockbuster GPU chip that established NVIDIA as a major player. In April 2009, Silicon Graphics, NVIDIA's high-end competitor, declared bankruptcy and sold itself to Rackable System for $25 million. Suddenly and unexpectedly, NVIDIA was the only important player in the consumer graphics market. And Jensen Huang donated $30 million to Stanford University to build an engineering school named after him. Um, you know, Stanford and, and Terman plays a, a very important part of my life. And I'm, not, I'm not Stanford's uh, usual, typical student. I believe I paid more tuition to Stanford than any student in the history of Stanford. And the reason for that was because I, um, I enrolled when I was um, uh, 20 years old, so that was 1983, 1984-ish. Uh, by the time I graduated, uh, it was in 1991, uh, I had uh, married, I had two children, um, uh, changed 150,000 diapers, and, um, uh, and built my career. What have I learned today? Jensen Huang made mistakes in launching NV1, which almost bankrupted his startup NVIDIA. He then survived with NV2 by partnering with Sega. In NV10 or GE Force 256, Wang hit jackpot and became a major player. In 2009, his major competitor, Silicon Graphics, declared bankruptcy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Jensen Huang from Inventor to Mainstream Tech, 2009 to 2017. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.